One song, three bass tones. First step, bass guitar. Rimmy, mini, mini! Bass guitar is very special and sits close to my heart. It's organic sounding because it's usually played by a human and has the potential to lock in with the drums and really bring the song to life. But what makes the bass guitar a little bit different from the synth bass or the 808 is that it doesn't commonly sit in the sub bass range. You're probably thinking, sub bass range? Bass range? Range? I gotta put this down and explain. Before we get into mixing the bass, let's quickly take a look at some numbers. The frequency spectrum is where all sound sits and is measured in hertz and kilohertz. Humans like you and I commonly hear from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. For example, <laughs> my voice sits between 350 hertz to 3 kilohertz, with harmonics all the way up to 17 kilohertz. Let's break it down further and look at the bass ranges. 20 hertz and below are usually frequencies we can't really hear, but we can sometimes feel. You'll want to cut anything below 20 hertz, as it can usually build up and really affect your mixes. 20 hertz to 60 hertz is the sub bass range. The fundamental notes of the synth bass and the 808 tend to sit in this range, but I'll get into that later. You'll often find the fundamental frequency of the kick drum sitting here as well. By the way, when I say fundamental frequency, I'm talking about the lowest frequency of a waveform. The lowest fundamental frequency of a four-string bass guitar sits at 41 hertz, which is a low E. 60 hertz to 250 hertz is the bass range. This range usually determines how fat or thin a sound is. This is where the bass guitar will usually live. But too much energy in this area will make your mixes sound too boomy. 250 hertz to 500 hertz is the low mid-range. This is also known as the bass presence range. Boosts at 300 hertz can add weight to the bass, but too much energy in this area will make your mixes sound muddy. All right, all right, now that we have that out of the way, you'll have a better understanding of the rest of the video. So stick around, you smarty. With the exception of the lower notes on the bass guitar that exist in the sub-bass range, all the notes on the four-string bass guitar conveniently, conveniently, yeah, 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 yeah. All notes on the four string bass guitar conveniently sit in the bass range. Ha! Bass guitar, bass range. Simple. This means the kick drum will commonly occupy the sub bass range. And remember, the bass drum doesn't change pitch, unless you've got some weird fancy timpani player in your band. An epic battle usually takes place between the bass and the kick drum though. Both often have a ton of energy living in the low end, which can often lead to muddiness and unwanted masking in your mix. You don't have to fight guys. Violence is never the answer. Let's all just sit down, breathe, and do a puzzle. An EQ puzzle, yeah! All right, so I'm gonna add a high pass filter to the bass guitar so that the kick can live in the sub. All right, now I'm gonna add a little boost where I see some fundamental frequencies happening on the bass guitar, around 100 hertz. Now I'm gonna cut around 100 hertz on the kick to give the bass guitar a little bit more room. You don't want to go too overboard with this because you don't want to take away the character of the kick. I'm adding a subtle boost in the bass presence range or the low mid range on the bass guitar to give it a little more something. And same thing again, I'm going to cut a little bit of that out of the kick drum. All right, let's listen to the bass and kick without that EQ. Now let's listen with the EQ on. You can hear the bass shining through a little bit more and let's listen in the context of the song. Next up, I'm gonna add some compression. Now, it's easy to go overboard when adding compression on bass. The most important thing is to dial in a slow attack so that the initial transient of the bass string getting hit pops out, feeding the listener's brain with that sweet, sweet pick or finger sound. I'm dialing in the threshold to get not more than five dB of attenuation. Like I said, don't wanna go overboard. I've got the ratio at about four to one. And I'm making sure I have that slow attack so that we get the initial attack of the bass string. So we're losing a lot of volume with the compressor, so let's add some makeup gain. 
Nice, so I've leveled out the dynamics that needed to be a little bit more even, and it's sounding smooth. I recorded my bass DI directly into my audio interface, so it's a pretty raw sound. You can get better results by recording through an amp as well, and blending the two signals together. Since I didn't have that luxury this time around, I'm gonna use a saturation plugin to help bring in some extra grit and texture. Saturation is gonna add extra harmonics, which are frequencies that exist above the fundamental frequency. This will help the bass be more audible on smaller playback systems, and it'll add more richness to the sound. All right, so I've added Lander FX bass to the bass guitar, and I like the sound of this heavy preset, so I'm gonna blend it into taste with this big sexy knob. <laughs> Let's have a look at what harmonics are being added in the EQ analyzer. Here it is without. And with it back on. And here it is in the context of the song. I love parallel processing saturation like this. It's so easy. All right, so bass guitar is done. Now let's take a look at synth bass. I've taken the same bass line and recreated it on a MIDI track. Obviously with MIDI, you have a lot more control over the sound. So I can change the attack time, the timbre, the tone as I'm going, which is a bit of an advantage over the bass guitar. I can also sustain the notes a lot longer, which you can't really do on the bass guitar. For this bass sound, I'm gonna use the synth plugin Diva. I found a preset that I really like. It has a killer thick tone, but you'll notice that it has a very deep sound. The great thing about most synth basses is that the range and sound are extremely full, from the sub bass all the way to the mid range. This means that I can go with the kick in the sub bass or the synth in the sub bass. It just depends on what I'm going for in the mix. Do I want a deep sustained sub bass or a heavy kick that hits you in the gut every time? <laughs> for this time, I'm gonna try to keep the synth living in the sub bass instead of the kick. All right, so this time I'm gonna add a high pass filter to the kick to get rid of those subs. I'm gonna add a little boost in the bass range on the kick to give it a little bit more weight. And then I'll cut a little bit of that out of the synth bass. I'd like the kick to hit a little bit harder, so I'm gonna try to add a bit of high end to see if it punches through more. And I'll cut a little bit of that on the synth bass. So let's have a listen without the EQ we just did. And with the EQ. And in the context of the mix. This EQ is sounding pretty good. Let's move on to effects. I won't add any typical kind of leveling compression since the volume of this synth bass is so consistent. What I would like to do though is experiment with some effects to give it more width. I'm a big fan of adding chorus on bass tracks. It can add a little bit of retro color and add a ton of widening to an otherwise basic sound. So again, I've added the Lander Effects bass plugin to this synth bass. And I like the sound of this punchy chorus preset. So I've got it about 30%. Let's see. always does a great job of adding width. Finally, the 808. What you might not know is that the 808 is actually a kick drum sound from the classic 808 drum machine that's been elongated and used as a bass sound. It has a characteristic thump sound coming in, usually tied with the kick, and then fades out. The trick with using an 808 is using one that already has a kick transient included, or making sure that the smack of the kick and the timing of the 808 play well together and function as one solid instrument. If you're using sample packs, you'll find 808s with all sorts of colors and tones. Check out my favorite ones here. I've duplicated the MIDI from the synth bass, adjusted it a bit, and assigned an 808 sample to it. Let's have a listen. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm an actor. 
interesting. <laughs> Ooh, that's it. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's sounding nice and heavy, but what can I do to make it more brutal? All right, so I know the 808 is taking up the sub bass for sure. So just like I did with the synth bass, I'm gonna add a high pass filter to the kick drum. To get a little bit more oomph out of this kick, oomph, 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 inf, what I'm gonna do is duck the 808 when the kick hits. I'm gonna do that with a little side chain compression. And I'm gonna side chain it to the kick. As you can see, it's already ducking down every time the kick plays, which is great. Duck it down a little bit less, bring that ratio up to about four to one. A pretty fast attack and a pretty fast release too. Now the kick is coming through the 808 a little bit more clearly. One thing that 808s might lack compared to the bass guitar or synth bass are the higher frequencies. This is important because if your listeners are listening through devices with smaller speakers like earbuds, that heavy 808 isn't gonna pop through. Just like I did on the bass guitar, I'm gonna use saturation to add frequencies above the fundamental. That will help the 808 translate on smaller speakers. I've added the Lander FX electric plugin, and I like this oversaturated preset, so let's dial it in. Oh yeah, there it is. Not only does it help the 808 stand out in the mix, but it adds some richness and makes it sound nice and full. Watch out though, tons of 808 samples already come processed and might already have saturation on them. So use your ears. One song, three types of bass mixed in. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Which one was my favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Just kidding, it was the bass guitar. That's it for this one, everyone. I really hope this video helps you mix in your bass tones and helps clear up any misconceptions about the low end. See ya.